Hello, so welcome along to some alkene questions this time. So, same as before with the old alkanes, um, I'll show you the question, you pause, have a go, and then uh, start again, and I'll go for the answer, hopefully. Okay, so here we go, here's your data question. So, we've got a propene here, and they want me to state and explain the bond angles around the first and the second carbon atom. So, just before you start, just to make it clear, it's going to be that guy and that guy, please. So, give that a go. Right, so, what have we got to do? Well, you need to think back to your atoms, bonds and groups here. If you have a look at this guy, um, the first carbon, he is going to be tetrahedral. Um, if I draw him out, so there we go, in the full displayed formula, You've got that, then you've got that carbon there, double bond, C, H, 2, like so. So how do I know that? Well, if you have a look at that carbon here, we, you can see you have got four bonding pairs. No lone pairs. And therefore, he is going to be tetrahedral. And you'll all know that that means your bond angle is 109.5 degrees. Right, what about that second carbon here? Well, you'll notice now he is got three bonding pairs around him. Because remember, we count that double bond as one. Um, so there we go, we've got three bonding pairs Again, no lone pairs, and therefore he is going to be trigonal planar. And he is going to have bond angles of 120 degrees. Okay, I hope you got that. Right, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so welcome along to this question. Uh, so we've got three things to do here. We're going to complete the equation then give the mechanism's name and draw out the mechanism. So give that a go, and uh, when you're ready, restart. So we've got a uh, alkene here, and we're gonna add bromine to it. So quite straightforward. Obviously the bromine's gonna add across the double bond. You've known this since your good old days of GCSE, to give you one, two, dibromo, cyclo, hexane. Um, mechanism name is obviously going to be electrophilic addition because my attacking species is the electrophile, which is bromine, and I am adding two molecules together. And finally, our mechanism. So this is an old favourite. You've got your cyclohexene there. Along comes bromine. Don't forget to put your dipole on your bromine. Delta plus, delta minus, then here we go, out come the electrons to that bromine, the bond breaks, make sure you break it in the middle, and the electrons go to that bromine, like so, that gives you your little intermediate, where you've added one bromine, but you've got a plus charge on this carbon next to it here, and you are then going to also have Br minus, Let's just put the lone pair on to make it clear that bromine is going to, bromide ion is going to attack the positive carbon there, known as a carbocation, and that will give me my product, which is above there. So there we go. That's the answer to that one. So I need to draw the displayed formula uh, for the possible products for the reaction of propene and CLBr. So this is obviously an unsymmetrical molecule. Um, there, also propene is unsymmetrical as well. So let's draw propene out, just so that we know exactly who we are talking about. There we go. Well, that's a dodgy carbon, isn't it? Let's get rid of him. There we go. Now I have drawn them slightly odd um, in that I've left spaces at the bottom just to show. So I've got to add Cl, 
BR to that. So I can do that in uh, two ways. The chlorine could go onto that carbon there, or he could go on to that carbon there. Um, so I can get two possible products. Here they are. First one. is I put the chlorine there and the BR there. The second one, rather similar, except for the fact I just swap around my chlorine and bromine. So my bromine goes there and my chlorine goes there. So those are my two possible products from that one. Okay, now we want me to give possible products now for this reaction. Now it's acid catalyst, so think about what that's going to do to that molecule there. So it's obviously a dehydration reaction, um, and this is the dehydration of an alcohol to give an alkene. Um, now this may be on your alcohol summary sheet, but you can give this one a go. So here we go. I've got to, I'm going to add some hydrogens on just to make it clear. Uh, so I have, remember I've got a hydrogen there, and I also have a hydrogen there. So when I dehydrate uh, this one, let's go for a different colour, I could remove that OH and that hydrogen. Alternatively, if it goes the other way, it may remove that H and OH. So I'll just keep the same colours. So if I do this one, first of all, Keep that like so, um, and I would have my double bond there. For the red one now, if I do that, it is going to be do 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 do. There's my methyl group, and there's my double bond there. Notice it's two separate products. If it was just um, a six membered ring, you'd get the same product, but because you've got this methyl group there it does mean you get two different isomers produced. Right, final one. So this is a little bit tricky. Again, the same um, reaction is going to be dehydration. Uh, they want me to um, remove that OH group. So we need to have a think about the possible products that I could make. Right, so again, I'm going to uh, just put some hydrogens on here just to make it clear. Remember, I have got hydrogens coming off of this one, but I also have hydrogens coming off of this one. I know we shouldn't be doing this statistically formally, but it's fine in this case. Right, so first one I could do is I could remove that OH and that H there. Nice and easy. I'll stick to skeletal formally. Bang, bang, bang. There goes my double bond there. So I've got my four carbons and my double bond on the end, so that's but one in. For the next one, okay, uh, let's go for blue. I could remove that OH again, but this time I'm going to remove that H there. So slightly more involved, so I will draw the first one as it goes. So that's it, my double bond's going to go there. And so, so I've made but2ene, but that of course is transbut2ene, um, and in that case I could also make cisbut2ene as well. So I've got three possible products, I've got but1ene, I have got transbut2ene, and I have got cis but two in, just to make sure that's a two there. Okay, so um, the reason I couldn't get those different isomers before is because my carbons were all in a ring, so they couldn't rearrange themselves. However, in this case, I get the excitement of being able to produce three different products. Okay, so that's it for alkenes. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I have done uh, answering the questions that I set rather oddly. Okay, so enjoy the rest of the holidays um, and I'll probably do an alcohols one perhaps next. Bye bye.